I thought this would provide a really good educational tool to explain the kind of investing that I like to do and the kind of investing that wins. So what I've done here is, as you can see on screen, in the blue is the S&P 500, the 500 uh, pretty much largest companies in the US. That's this blue line you can see here. Okay. Uh, we've taken the picture since COVID to so give a really good volatile period, not just a simple market going up and up and up. The kinds of securities we want, and what you can see in green is the uh, is Microsoft. We want the kind of companies which don't fall as far as the broader index. When the markets fall, don't fall as far. Remember, it's very difficult to find any company which won't fall at all, but doesn't fall as far. And then as the market recovers, it recovers more. In other words, doesn't fall as far, recovers more. There, uh, One way you could look at it is they're square root companies. We want square root companies, companies which don't fall as far and then rebound more. How do you find those? Well, we look for valuation, growth, income, cash flow, consistency of returns and low volatility. All of these are factors which are very important. The mistake most people make is that they have companies which when the market's rising, of course, shoot ahead. So they might have this part, but when the market falls, they equally shoot down. Another word for this is high beta stocks. We're trying to avoid uh, beta as a method of picking stocks. We want pure what's called alpha, outperformance of the markets. And value, growth, income, cash flow are all factors in delivering that alpha. There's another interesting thing for you to notice here. First of all, it's not about the money you make when the markets go up. It's the money you keep, in other words, that you don't lose when the markets fall. And one more thing. Notice that this is an index. That's a diversified index of 500 companies. Now, when you tell people, oh, perhaps in your portfolio you should have only 15 stocks and you show them the data to support this, and your fund manager has put his investments into 100 or 200 stocks, they'll say, no, 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 the fund manager's job is not just to get the upward move. Of course, they've done less than a single stock. A single stock is high risk. Of course, it's going to do more. But when the markets fall, that single stock will drop a lot more and you'll suffer as a result. Well, this proves you don't. In actual fact, this shows that there are certain single stocks where you're not having higher risk. Despite the fact, just look at it there. There you go. When the markets fall, doesn't fall as far. When it rises, it rises more. Now, some people won't get that. They'll say, no, nope, far better to have 500 stocks. As a general rule, it is. But what I'm saying is there are exceptions to that rule, and it's the exceptions that we're looking for. The ones when the markets fall, doesn't fall as far, and rise more when the market rises. Something else I want to show you, which is also important. What we're also looking for, it's a, it's a different way of pointing that out, is this. This is the distribution of Microsoft I've taken. This example in black compared to the S&P 500. Notice how, yes, the S&P 500 can give high returns. And this is the frequency of which it happens. OK, and it has a narrow range in which it does it. Well, it's an index of 500 stocks. So you'd expect it to have a narrow range of movements. However... Microsoft, whilst it might not have individually high days, tends to be further to the right-hand side. In other words, it tends to have more periods where it just basically outperforms, gives uh, bigger returns. In more periods, it gives bigger returns. So overall, despite the fact that there'll be times when you get this peak, it is actually, compared to the broader market, you want stocks which are more to this side. Okay, ones which consistently outperform. Of course, what you really want is something which just does this. Well, those don't exist. Uh, instead, as you move to the right, you don't just get a big peak. What you tend to get is sort of a fizzly, and that's fine, and that's good. You want these. You certainly don't want stocks which are up here or have the bulk of their returns on this side of the S&P. And that's how you beat an index, making sure you've got that. Something else I want to show you. Whilst historical prices don't repeat themselves, of course, and past performance is not an indicator of the future. It is sometimes useful to see, well, let's say history did repeat itself. What might my returns look like if it was, on average, uh, like what had happened in history? You might also look at the 10th worth percentile and say to yourself, well, 
is that still attractive as a one year or three year return? Anyway, I do like to look at the median. I do like to say, well, what might the return be? And then I do like to look at the worst case scenario and say, could I live with that as an alternative? I don't bother looking at the 90th or 75th. They're just icing on the cake. But you'll have noticed I'm talking about stocks. I'm talking about outperforming the market. I'm talking about looking at data, uh, looking at statistics. Very often people look at price charts or they will look at valuations. They'll look at fundamentals. Well, often overlooked is statistics. After all, stocks are data. Uh, and that can be uh, an added dimension, which because it's so often overlooked, it means people aren't looking at a very important part of data. And instead, they're relying on prejudices, biases, things they think they know. Uh, my approach, our approach is a lot more diligent than that. We're not just looking at the price charts. We're not just looking at the fundamentals, the accounts or just the news. We're also looking at the statistics of the stock. And we believe we're in some very good company uh, in doing that. Thank you very much.